Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> Happy holiday season. Today is December 26th. Hopefully everyone had a good, a good holiday time with uh, friends and family and time off work if you got it. <clears throat> um, I just wanted to make a quick video because the last, oh, the last three or four days of rotations, I've really been noticing a loss of forage utilization because of one thing that I didn't do this year. And it was very apparent in this this uh, last half of this two and a half acres. For anyone not familiar, I've got five acres of grazing that we own here on this micro ranch. They're split into two uh, two and a half acre pastures, um, and you can you can kind of see, you know, right around here where it starts uh, this last half of this two and a half acre pasture. The reason why I decided to touch on this subject and make a video was because my goal was to get to January 1st, grazing into January 1st before we had to start feeding hay. I'm modeling my style of cattle management off of Greg Judy. I'm in central Iowa. I'm about five hours away from him. So we're pretty similar in our climates and our grass growth. And this is obviously a small herd of Dexters, but we're a small ranch. So uh, anything I can do to extend my grazing days you know, like Greg always says, is is money back in your pocket. The last few years of running cattle the way Greg Judy does, you know, with managed intensive grazing, uh, giving them a strip every day, moving them twice a day, and then not allowing them back onto previous, previously grazed stuff until it's recovered, has allowed me to get to dang near January 1st this year before I have to start feeding hay. We're only going to be grazing for, for another couple of days here. So we're going to be feeding hay before January 1st, but I could have grazed January 1st if I would have, and I'll give you a second to guess what I should have been doing this year that Greg always talks about that I didn't do. Maybe this is a good indication. I should have been mowing at least one time. All over the pasture, like I said, especially this second half, I've got areas like this where really good forage, and I know it's brown, There's there is some green in here, some green blades in here, but this is essentially standing hay. You know, this is gonna be better quality than any of the small square hay bales that I have up in my loft right now, because that stuff was was cut and baled in, you know, that's first or second cutting hay, and it's had time to lose a lot of uh, nutritional value. So even though this stuff is brown out here in the pasture, it's still going to be a lot better than what I've got in my hay loft. But the cows have already worked their way through this area and they didn't touch it. That's because of all of this right here. And this stuff is hard and stemmy. I mean, if I stick my hand down on here, it's it's poking me. It hurts. So I don't blame them. If I was a if I was a, a cow, I wouldn't want to stick my face down in here and try and grab a handful of this good stuff because you have to combat with these spikes in your eyes, in your nose, in your teeth. Anyone who's familiar with lump jaw on a on a cow, um, one of the things that causes that can cause lump jaw is something like this getting stabbed into the gum, getting stuck in between the teeth of the animal, and then causing a and then causing a uh, an infection. It's it's few and far between. You know, we have clumps all over the place. Uh, that have not been utilized because of tall stemmy stuff. So here we have some Queen Anne's lace that became mature. And obviously this stuff is really, really brittle and really, really hard and pokey. And the Queen Anne's lace was the work. What I should have done, which is again, what Greg will do or try and gets done, you know, everything um, that he can. You, don't, you never want to mow ahead of the cattle but after the cows have gone through an area, usually before August 1st, because August 1st is kind of that, at least in our area, is the kind of the start of your stockpile. So anything that you're wanting to graze over winter, like what we're doing here, or into winter, you really should leave it untouched. Obviously don't mow it, try not to graze it, leave it as long as possible, um, starting August 1st, just to give you maximum regrowth. So really before August 1st, what I should have done on everything that was grazed, I should have come through and mode you know <clears throat> something like this i mean there's a lot of green in here there's still a lot of green but you've got 
I don't even know what the heck this would have been. The other thing we had a bad outbreak of this year was, I wouldn't say outbreak, but it was a reproduction year for a lot of the shikori in our pasture. Uh, you know, there's a lot of these tall stemmy plants that actually have a lot of good nutritional value for the animals when they're in their green flowering form. You know, shikori is a great example. Uh, I would turn the cows into a new strip or a new chunk for the day. And the first thing they would go after would be the tops of these uh, shikori plants that were throwing out those purple or white flowers. Man, they loved those things. And the manure was looking really, really good. Uh, so I knew there was some good nutritional value they were getting. Um, and their, you know, their rumen was performing really, really well. So I really didn't want to mow all that stuff off. But again, this is where it comes into you mow after the herd has moved through so you're not taking taking feet ahead of them but when this shikori gets hard and stemmy it's horrible you know here's another queen anne's lace there's some good green stuff in here a lot of good green blades i mean that that'd be a good mouthful but they just couldn't get to it because of all this stuff um this is another another good example of some good some good forage that they've passed up because just dried thistles i mean this stuff is really stemmy and obviously a lot of the, these thistles are dead now because of the freezing we've been having overnight um buddy you're making this difficult uh but you know when those thistles are standing up tall that was stuff that the mower easily could have gotten um and depend again depending on when i had a chance to mow it you know even if it was early early in july that would have been a lot of good regrowth the thistles wouldn't have regrown as fast as the grass uh, grew so just clumps like this all over this pasture that the cows have not been able to uh, utilize because of the tall stemmy dead weeds or plants that did not get clipped off earlier in the season and again it really would have only bought me a few days i mean it's not like the entire pasture is, is being uh, under grazed right now or underutilized because of this it really would have only bought me a few days but a few days would have put me right to January 1st, which was my target this year for, you know, stockpiled grazing. Um, so that's just kind of what, what brought it to mind is that that one simple thing of running the mower uh, over each strip after the cows move off of it, uh, you know, would have, would have bought me a few more days of grazing. We're obviously not a large operation out here, but like Greg Judy says, um, Every day that you're not feeding hay, that's money back in your pocket. That's, you know, that's essentially hay that you get to save through to next year. And that's less hay you have to buy next year. So going off of that figure, because we started grazing last year, December 15, I essentially saved $55 last year because I had, I had about 11 bales, 55 to $65 last year. I had 11 bales left over um, by the time the cows were fully on pasture. So at five to six dollars a bale, depending on you know what cutting it was, saving 55, 65 bucks for the year in hay, that's just less money I have to spend, uh, you know, I had to spend this year on hay, that's a positive. You obviously can scale that up to thousands and thousands of dollars that you could save every year just by keeping your animals on pasture longer and keeping that hay in storage and not feeding it. Now, just to answer those questions that I'm sure will come up because people will say, well, you only had 11 bales left over. You probably should have bought more. I actually, this is 11 bales even into April. So I was feeding hay into April, uh, kind of that, what I like to call, or I guess what some producers call a transition period. So man, this guy's not gonna leave me alone. They're starting to eat the new shoots that are coming up. They're starting to eat uh, the new grass that's, that's poking through. And I want to keep feeding hay for two reasons. It's usually about April 15th that we get the cows out on uh, pasture full time and we start those, uh, that rotational grazing again for the year. But we're talking the first couple weeks of April here. Uh, you know, we start grazing them maybe, keep them on a strip the following morning, instead of giving them a new strip, uh, I'll throw a small square out and I'll feed them hay. They'll fill up on that hay and that's what, you know, they, they kind of ruminate on, ruminate on, they digest all day. So then when I open up the, the strip for the second half of the day, they're not as hungry. They don't totally take that grass down. The other reason why, you know, I'll still feed hay into spring grazing is just for their, their rumen uh, health. 
you know, to try and keep that room in as neutral as possible. Uh, it takes average, it takes about 14 days for uh, an animal's rumen to digest to its new feed, um, you know, to the point that they're not that they're not losing weight. We all know you turn a you turn a cow out onto fresh spring, fresh spring pasture uh, after been after you've been feeding them hay all winter, and what happens? That really liquid, runny um, manure, and they're actually losing weight at that point. You know, they're definitely not gaining weight, and they're probably not keeping condition. They're actually losing weight. So if you can give them some some dry matter, some hay kind of keep that rumen uh happy because that's what it's been that's what that rumen's been breaking down for the last couple months over winter and then slowly introduce those fresh tender green uh, blades of grass that's just healthier for the cow especially if your animals are lactating depending on your calving season or they're in that very important third trimester uh you know the last thing you want is for your your mama cows to actually be nutrient deficient and losing body condition during that third trimester of calf growth where you know 80 percent of that calf growth happens in that third trimester and they need to start preparing for uh, lactation so uh yeah i didn't have you know i didn't get to the last day of feeding hay and turn them out on pasture with only 11 bales left. I always try and buy extra for those long winters or those, you know, really harsh cold winters. Um, but yeah, I continued feeding hay. We honestly probably could have gotten them out there at the end of March, towards the end of March, you know, uh, the pastures would have been fine. But like Greg Judy always says, the last thing you want to do is lop off that baby's head if that grass plant's not ready to be grazed, but you turn them out and the cows are ripping that grass off. Um, you know, that just sets you back for whole year. So we actually have some really cold temperatures coming. We've got a few more days of what we got now, which is overcast, windy, 40s. Uh, overnight lows are right at about freezing. And then this time next week, our overnight lows are actually going to be in single digits. So we're, I mean, there was even a few days I saw that <clears throat> they're talking about it getting down to, uh, you know, one degree. So pretty, pretty dang close to, to zero coming up here. So the cows are really going to need uh, some good feed, especially going into the night. They're going to they're going to be looking forward to to eating some hay. Hey, we also started getting that animal shelter behind me. We also got that all bedded down with straw about four or five days ago. Got all of our our wheat straw filled up in there and keeping the animals nice and warm. That's obviously going to help save some feed as well. That's you know it's it's just like supplementation. If you watched my previous video, you saw that I, I threw out one of those 30% Purina protein tubs. One, because the grass is losing its nutritional value. There's obviously a lot of green where they're at right now, but it seems like every day that green disappears. You know, every morning when I come out, there's frost on the ground. Uh, it's just more and more of this of this forage ahead of them is losing its its nutritional value, particularly protein. So I started throwing out that 30% protein tub so they can keep their protein up, but also because it just makes it just makes the the forage ahead of them last even longer. They're not relying 100% on all of this um, this pasture ahead of them to to get everything they need. Um, so you know, throwing out some protein. Uh, keeping them warm at night, like I said, putting that bedding in the animal shelter to keep them warm at night, keep them out of the wind. We've had some really windy days lately too. That's just less feed that they have to eat. So it just kind of helps stretch stretch the pasture we have ahead of us. And you can see this is an area she just passed up. I mean, I watched her and yeah, there's some manure. You know, cows aren't gonna graze close to their manure, but <clears throat> there's some good bites of grass in here that she could have taken, unfortunately all this pokey stuff but like i said i'm you know i'm i'm fine with it because i would rather have them just skip this maybe lose a few days of grazing than really go after this stuff and you know stick something like this through their nose or through their eye or like i said get it caught in their gum or their teeth and then uh you know i'll have to take the cows to the vet in the middle of winter because of a infection going on in their mouths so i'll take it so that's it guys, I'm gonna head in. My hands are freezing and it's starting to become hard to talk because my mouth is starting to get cold. The wind's really picked up, temperature's dropping. 
Uh, yeah, any questions, comments, sarcastic remarks, you know, shoot them at me, let me know, uh, and I'll see you guys at the next one.